All right, you feather merchants. This is about when I was an iron worker and I would spend my winters down in Mexico. It was uh, 1968. I'd already, uh, I just finished my three year apprentice program. And um, actually, I read in the newspaper where the Chicago Police Department was hiring. So uh, I remember uh, the, like, maybe you guys remember in 1968. They had the Democratic uh, Convention in Chicago, and uh, a lot of protesters there. They were uh, tearing up the city, breaking windows and uh, on Michigan Avenue. And uh, I remember the police, when they came in to clean it up, they uh, came in with paddy wagons, and they beat the shit out of these people and arrested them. So anyway, when I saw the ad, I thought, gee, wow, that looks like a good job. So um, I went uh, down there, uh, submitted my application, went through the testing process, and um, oh, this is uh, interesting. While uh, we were doing the physical, uh, they had a doctor that were was uh, coming around, and uh, we're all in our shorts, and uh, they were uh, checking for a heart murmur. I never heard of a heart murmur anyway. They're checking for a heart murmur, and uh, he said, uh, the, the cop said that uh, the doctor taps you on the shoulder, that means you're done. Just go put your clothes on, don't say anything, say anything and uh, you're finished. So um, he's going down the line, he got to me, and uh, then he goes to the next guy, then the next guy. And uh, the guy that was, uh, uh, standing uh, two people away from me. Uh, he was a uh, good shape, black guy, and they tapped him on the shoulder. And uh, he went and uh, never said anything. He uh, went and put his clothes on, but what he did, he put his uniform on. And he was wearing a Marine Corps uniform. And what, uh, he's obviously a Marine rec recruiter and uh, you can see uh, he had been to Vietnam. He had several ribbons there on his uniform. And uh, it was uh, interesting because when the cop uh, saw that, he went over and uh, whispered to the cop that's with the doctor, and they both looked over at him. And uh, one of the uh, cops went over to the, um, the Marine, and he said, uh, take your uniform off. And, uh, fall back in the line. So uh, I, I thought, boy, that's really good. He made it. And I'm sure he was uh, would have been an outstanding cop. Anyway, um, so I, uh, the last process, uh, th thing I have to do is do a background. And they said it'd be at least a month before they'd get to me. So I got this time on my hands. I'm, uh, I'm iron working. Um, it's in the winter time, and I... Uh, read about this village in, uh, or this small town in, uh, on the coast of Mexico called Puerto Vallarta. Of course, now it's a big uh, resort, but back then it, it wasn't that big. And I asked uh, I, I, this friend of mine that I went to high school with, I said, uh, how'd you like to go down to Mexico for a month? And uh, he said, yeah, yeah, let's do that. So uh, we uh, got in my uh, truck and uh, took us two days to get to the border. And I think uh, we crossed at uh, Nuevo Laredo, I believe, and drove across um, Mexico, up in the mountains, uh, through Durango. And uh, on the way, uh, uh, on our way to the, the coast, uh, we uh, stopped at a, a movie set. That It was in the middle of nowhere. And there was no signs or nothing, but anyway, it was an old movie set, and they had one guy that was a garden it, um, and I saw it on uh, the uh, internet where now it's a big tourist resort. People pay to go in there, and when we went there, we were the only people there, and uh, he didn't they didn't charge you anything. Well, anyway, we uh, got to Matsalan, spent the night in Matsalan, and uh, we're headed south down the coast, and. Um, on the way to Puerto Vallarta, uh, we both saw this sign uh, on the highway where it said uh, San Blas. 
I, I never heard of some bus. And uh, so we both thought, well, let's, uh, uh, it's early in the a in, uh, early afternoon, so uh, let's uh, see what it looks like. So uh, we turned off the highway and uh, it took about 45 minutes on this uh, windy road going through the jungles and uh, uh, all the way to the coast. And uh, I remember we crossed this small bridge and uh, here we are in the middle of uh, a little fishing village. Um, very unique. And uh, so anyway, we get a hotel and uh, I think back then the hotels were only Gee, I think it only cost us about a dollar, a dollar a night. And it was clean. It was good. It was a nice place. Uh, anyway, we, uh, it's a small town. So um, that evening we went out and uh, went to this uh, one bar was, uh, called Torino's. And uh, it was a bar and restaurant. And it turned out to be uh, an Italian years ago had... Uh, uh, moved to Mexico and uh, got married, had a family, and uh, anyway, by the time we got there, he'd passed away. But he was from Torino, Italy, and his uh, son owned the, the bar and restaurant and also the hotel right across the street from it, the Bucanero. Um, his uh, sister had the, the theater. There was a movie theater there, and uh, she owned that. Um, it was interesting because I got bit by a dog in there one time. <laughs> But um, anyway, uh, we uh, spent the night there, and uh, we, uh, it was like uh, a lot of fun, you know. It was like, there was uh, no tourists there. Uh, any of the gringos that were there, they were uh, travelers, and uh, we later found out that uh, a couple of them were drug runners, and they would uh, go there and uh, relax uh, in between runs. Um, so anyway, we, uh, stayed there, uh, ended up staying three months and, uh, we rented a house for, uh, $24 a month that, uh, was within walking distance of the beach, uh, just, a, a block away from, uh, where the Torino's bar was at and, um, the, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, anyway, in, uh, in uh, like the mornings, I'd get up in the morning, run the, uh, the beach. The beach was like almost a mile long, and there'd only be about four or five people on the beach every day except for Sunday when all the locals came down there. And uh, anyway, we ended up uh, spending three months there, and uh, while we were living in this little town, the house next door to us, there were some Australians that lived there. They called it the Kiwi House. And uh, we got to be friends with them. And uh, they said, why are you paying all that rent uh, in the house? He said, just move in with us. So uh, they had a big house. And we thought, oh, yeah, OK. So we moved in with them. And then our rent was something like uh, $3 a piece a month. <laughs> so it was really cheap. And um, while well, uh, uh, we were hanging out with these guys. Uh, a couple of them uh, told me, they said, uh, we're going to go to an island uh, next year, next winter. And uh, it's a Colombian possession. It's called San Andreas. And they said, uh, if you want to uh, come along, you know, just uh, let us know. And I told them, I said, well, you, you uh, just call me. Uh, a week or so before you guys get ready to leave and I'll meet you down in Miami and then uh, I'll go with you. And um, anyway, it turned out uh, the following year, I, uh, uh, they called me up. I, went, I met them down in Miami. We get on a flight to uh, Columbia, to Barranquilla, Columbia. Uh, spent the night there and from Barranquilla we flew to the island, San Andreas. I, I never had heard of this island before, and neither did anyone else. And um, beautiful, beautiful island, uh, Colombian possession. And uh, we get a, a taxi and uh, ask the taxi driver to uh, 
show us uh, some places to stay. And as he's driving us around to uh, a couple of hotels, he said, you know, he said, how long are you going to be here? And we told him uh, at least a month. So he s said, well, uh, I got a guest house. And we thought, well, I don't know. Uh, well, well, we'll try it here. So show us the guest house. Well, anyway, it turned out that he lived in a really nice neighborhood. The governor lived in this neighbor neighborhood. And it was uh, uh, on the way to go to his house. It was uh, a higher elevation. We were going, driving down this windy road. Beautiful homes, really nice places. And uh, we uh, parked in front of his house. And it was uh, all Spanish uh, style, red tile roof. And uh, his guest house was in the back. So we go into the uh, backyard, and the guest house looked just like his house. Now, I'm with um, uh, three Australians or four, three Australians. And um, uh, we looked at the house, and uh, the house fully furnished, came with the maid, daily maid service. And he said, uh, uh, how would uh, $31 a month sound to you guys? <laughs> I thought, that sounds pretty good. So uh, we uh, rented the house for $31 a month, split four ways. So uh, it, like I said, it was a, just a beautiful island. We spent a month there, just crystal clear waters. Uh, what a, a wonderful experience. And um, uh, we, uh, what we wanted to do, though, is... Uh, go through uh, Central America. So we flew back to uh, Costa Rica and uh, we uh, spent a few days in Costa Rica and we went down to the bus station to buy a ticket to uh, a one-way ticket up to Mexico City and uh, they had a bus at the time. It was really inexpensive. Uh, they had the Pan Am Highway that would run all the way from South America all the way up into Mexico. Uh, Mexico City. So uh, our plan was to get a bus ticket and uh, just get off uh, the bus in each country and uh, spend the day and then get back on and go to the next one. Well, anyway, uh, we went to the bus station and they said, uh, you can't buy a ticket right now. There are uh, uh, the people in uh, El Salvador and Honduras are uh, they're fighting, they're having a war. And, you know, the war was over a soccer game. So, uh, you know, of course, you didn't have the Internet. All you got is a newspaper and what someone tells you. So we, uh, we, hung out, uh, we hung out there in Costa Rica until they said the uh, coast was clear. And uh, we get on the bus. And um, we're uh, stopping off in uh, each country. And we... Uh, uh, eventually make it to uh, we're in Honduras and as uh, we we, helped, we couldn't help notice uh, we're the only ones on the bus um, and a uh, Catholic priest gets on the bus with us and he looks at us in disbelief he said where are you guys going and uh, we told him uh, we're going to, we're eventually going to Mexico City but we're going to uh, through the, we're going to go to the border from uh, Honduras to El Salvador. He said, oh, gee. He said, it's, uh, they're, uh, it's a bad time to be doing that. He says, uh, when we get to the border, he says, uh, let me do all the talking. He said, don't say anything to anyone. So I uh, thought, okay. So uh, we uh, were on the bus, and we, uh, uh, we start going through the border town, and... Uh, I thought, what the hell? You saw there was cars that are overturned, they're on fire. I saw the bank. Uh, the bank had been blown up. It was half uh, half of it was gone, uh, and there were uh, El, so El Salvadoran military running around that town, and uh, these guys, um, I don't know, they're uh, making it real tough on the, the locals there in uh, uh, in this town. So. Uh, we get to the border, uh, the border uh, checkpoint, and the soldiers ran on the, ran up on the bus. And they started screaming at us in uh, Spanish, and uh, uh, the 
priest, he's uh, yelling back at them. And uh, these guys are eye fornicating us. And I, I thought to myself, if this priest uh, hadn't been on the bus, it would have been bad news for us. But um, anyway, the priest said, uh, he wants you to get off the bus. Uh, get off the bus, let them process your uh, passports. I'm going to stay right with you. And uh, then uh, uh, hopefully they'll let you through. And uh, we did that. And the whole time, these soldiers, are, uh, they were not friendly in there all. They got their panties all bunched up over a soccer game. Can you imagine that? I mean, it was so serious that um, uh, the El, El Salvadoran uh, Army uh, flew their planes in the Honduras and were bombing these people. I thought, what the hell? And, you know, they don't know. Maybe they were a so soccer enthusiast or something. I don't even like the game of soccer, you know, so I... I don't have anything to do with this, but uh, they don't know that. Anyway, um, they let us through the border, and uh, we uh, continued on our trip. And uh, anyway, I'll uh, uh, tell you more about uh, the place that we stayed in uh, Mexico. All right, I'm going to sign off. All right, you feather merchants. Oh, yeah.